The DuPont Company presents The Cavalcade of Music. Next Tuesday evening at the Center Theater in Rockefeller Center, New York, an audience of some 3,000 people will see the opening performance of a new American musical romance called Virginia. Four people who will be prominently mentioned in the program are here on this stage this evening. There's Arthur Schwartz, who has written so much good light music for the American musical stage and whose latest score is that of the forthcoming musical Virginia. And there's Lawrence Stallings and Owen Davis, who wrote the book of Virginia. And Don Voorhees, conductor of the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra, will be in the pit at the Center Theater next Tuesday evening conducting the orchestra as supervisor of music for the entire production. So this is quite a gala evening, for DuPont has arranged a half hour of the music of Arthur Schwartz, including some numbers from his latest score, and with Don Voorhees conducting and Miss Francia White with us again to lend her lovely soprano voice. Let's begin the Arthur Schwartz program with a tune he wrote nine years ago for the little show. It's I Guess I'll Have to Change My Plan. Arthur Schwartz graduated from New York University, he studied law and was admitted to the bar and practiced for over three years. But he'd always had a strong urge to write music, especially the musical comedy type. So his close friends weren't surprised when young Schwartz started writing tunes that quickly won him a place in Broadway's big time. A good example is his hit from Freeze a Crowd, Something to Remember You By. <laughs>
Last season, one of the biggest hits on Broadway was the show called At Home Abroad. And in it was this Arthur Schwartz number, Love is a Dancing Thing, with lyrics by Howard Deep. DuPont's guest, Francia White, is going to sing it for us now. I'd like to have you meet our composer guest, Arthur Schwartz. Arthur? How do you do, everybody? Sounds great, Don. Thanks, Arthur. When we were discussing this program with Arthur Schwartz, he mentioned a story back of his great hit tune, Dancing in the Dark. Remember that story, Arthur? I certainly do. When we were about to open the bandwagon in Philadelphia, we suddenly realized the show had grown too big. We had too many scenes. It looked as though we'd have to cut out a number. And that number was almost Dancing in the Dark. However, Howard Deeps and I had a feeling this wasn't the right thing to do. And by switching the order of scenes, we kept dancing in the dark in the show. And here's the hit that was almost discarded, Dancing in the Dark, with a special setting by Don Voorhees, conducting the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra.
Before continuing our program of Arthur Schwartz music, we pause for a message from the DuPont Company. Vandalia, Ohio, August 25th. Things are popping here this week. More than a 1,000 crack shooters from all over North America are competing in the Grand American Tournament, the World Series of Trap Shooting. In the sport of trap shooting, clay targets are thrown from a mechanical hurling device called a trap, and the shooter attempts to shatter them as they soar through the air. Each shooter gets the same number of targets, and whoever breaks the greatest number wins. Picture the drama as a tense crowd watches the keen-eyed contestants battling for a championship. Time after time, they swing their favorite shotguns to their shoulders, pull the triggers, and knock the soaring targets into dust. Perhaps it's a 100-target event, and two of them are tied with 95 straight hits. They each break 96, 97, 98, and then the pressure gets too great. One of them misses, and the other goes on to capture a championship that is the most coveted in the world of trap shooting. Detroit, Michigan. Next week, another group of shooters with keen eyes and steady nerves will have a chance to prove their mettle at a different form of shooting sport, a game called skeet, in which the clay targets are thrown from two traps, one high and one low. In skeet, shooters stand at eight different positions in a semicircle. By firing at the flying targets from various angles, the shooters get practice in all the different shots likely to be encountered when hunting game in the field. Skeet is growing rapidly in popularity. Last year, Skeet fans used 60 million shotgun shells. The big event in this sport is the third national Skeet Championship to be held at Detroit, Michigan, next week. Trap shooting and Skeet have no age limit. A boy of 14 and a veteran of 70 are among the past winners of the Grand American Trap Shooting Tournament. A woman once finished third. And another 14-year-old lad beat the champions of 31 states to win last year's national Skeet Championship. Strangely enough, chemistry contributes in no small degree to the pleasure that thousands find in trap shooting and skeet. In the early days of DuPont's history, powder was an important part of DuPont's business. Though it now amounts to less than 1% of the DuPont company's business in volume, DuPont still takes the same pride as it has taken for 135 years in producing dependable sporting powders. And chemical research carried on in DuPont laboratories has brought about a notable improvement in the smokeless powder used in so much field and target shooting today. An associated organization, the Remington Arms Company, produces shot shells specially loaded for trap shooting and skeet, and four models of shotguns specially adapted to these pastimes. Remington's group of sporting equipment is rounded out with a line of clay targets and traps and an advisory service available to those interested in starting trap shooting or skeet clubs in their communities. Incidentally, the latest Remington traps and approximately half a million Remington Blue Rock targets are being used exclusively at this year's Grand American Tournament. And so the chemist makes another contribution to the pleasure and satisfaction that thousands derive from these fine outdoor sports. Continuing the melodies of Arthur Schwartz, Miss Francia White, DuPont's charming singing star, has selected as her next solo, You and the Night and the Music, from the musical success, Revenge with Music.
we're going to hear music from the score of the show, Virginia, which opens next Tuesday here in New York. To introduce the numbers, I'm going to call on the composer himself, Arthur Schwartz. You know, we might almost be working at the Center Theater. John Voorhees is our musical director, just as he directs the music on these DuPont programs. And Lawrence Stallings and Owen Davis are standing beside me here, too, just as they do in rehearsals of Virginia. I'd like to introduce the authors of the book, Mr. Owen Davis and Mr. Lawrence Stallings. Mr. Davis? <clears throat> Good evening. Arthur, you seem more than usually glad to see me here tonight. Well, uh, I am. Uh, if you're here, I'm sure you're not over at rehearsal cutting out one of my numbers. Isn't that so, Lawrence? Yes, but you remember what you said the other day. When you were in Hollywood last year, you had to write a song in a hurry because it had to be cut out in a hurry. But seriously, ladies and gentlemen, we feel that Arthur Schwartz has done himself proud with his score for Virginia. I wish George Gershwin could have lived to see and hear this score. Gershwin always believed in Arthur and in his originality as a composer. George Gershwin's death was a great, great shock to me. I always valued his musical opinions more than anyone else's. And to me, he'll still be in the house opening night. Well, now, won't you gentlemen tell us something about the show? Mr. Stallings? Well, Arthur and I have the same birthday, November 25th, and on that day last year, we described the idea of the show Virginia to the executives of the Santa Theater. We also said we'd like to have with us as a collaborator the man we feel who knows more about the theater than anyone else, Mr. Owen Davis. Mr. Davis, what do you think of the show? I think it'll be a pretty good show, but I'll tell you more about it this time next week. <laughs> In the meantime, why don't you get Don Voorhees and the boys and Miss White to give us the highlights from your score of Virginia. All right. The first number Don is going to play is his favorite song from the score. Mine too, Mr. Davis. And mine, Mr. Stone. An old flame never dies. <laughs> White, the DuPont prima donna, says her favorite is My Heart is Dancing with Albert Stillman's beautiful lyric, broadcast now for the first time. I'm not 
Someone Else is the title of the song from the first love scene in Virginia. John Boris will play it now. of a colored ensemble in Virginia is a gay rhythmic song called Goodbye Jonah. Thank you, Arthur Schwartz, and thanks to Owen Davis and Lawrence Stallings for coming this evening. A successful young lawyer who turned composer and became an outstanding success at that, too, that's Arthur Schwartz, a personable fellow with unusual talent for writing interesting music for stage productions. He has gone far and should go much farther. We're happy to salute his contributions to America's lighter melodies on the DuPont Cavalcade of Music. Next Wednesday evening, DuPont will present Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra with Francia White again, our guest artist, in a program of music by the immortal Victor Herbert. Remember this? That's Kiss Me Again. You'll hear Miss Francia White sing many of the lovely Herbert melodies next Wednesday at this same time with Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra when the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware again presents the Cavalcade of Music.
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.